Matthew. Can't stop, Dad. Got a deadline. Deadline? You're to press in an hour and I've got a story to file. Well, surely you can wait a minute. It's not Fleet Street down there. It's only the local rag. The Mercury is not a rag, Father. Of course it is. There's never anything in it. Then why do you spend three hours every Friday reading it? <laughs> because it takes me that long to find something interesting. Yeah, well, all that's going to change now I'm there. You're only there for work experience, Matthew. And you're not a reporter. You're supposed to take the advert. <laughs> that's just the beginning. Once I've come up with a really big story. Oh, yes, well, in the meantime, put that in, will you? Dad, mm -hmm. this is an advert for a cleaning lady. That's right. Oh, what's happened to Enid? She's gone. Where? <laughs> the Riviera. <laughs> she always said she couldn't afford a holiday. Well, she can now. She won 100,000 on the premium bonds. <laughs> what? Well, she was this month's winner living in Middlesex. <laughs> She never told me. She didn't want any begging letters. <laughs> but this is my big chance. What a story. Char hits the jackpot. No, she wouldn't like that, Matthew. Anyway, she doesn't want any publicity. Oh, it's a pity. It's a good story. What's the difference? The editor wouldn't know a good story if it got up and bit him. Well, what makes you say that? Well, I'll tell you something. I've lived here all my life and I have never once, not once, been mentioned in that paper. That's because you've never done anything interesting. What? Well, what have you done? Lots of things. <laughs> I won the Tate Memorial Trophy. That wasn't in. Bowls? Who's interested in bowls? The editor. I knocked him out in the semi-final. <laughs> We're looking for stories with a human interest. Yes, well, I'm human, aren't I? Not the thing from outer space. I mean, something exciting, adventurous. What have you ever done that's adventurous? It was that gas leak a few years back. I smoked gas down the road. I evacuated the old people, turned the gas off, notified the emergency services. The gas board even congratulated me on my quick thinking. What did the Mercury say? Mr. Mellows hailed as local hero. Who's Mr. Mellows? No, I was. He spelt my name wrong. <laughs> Just make sure that goes in, will you? Cleaning lady required. Two pounds an hour. What's the matter? Well, it doesn't say much. It's not meant to at 30p a word. Can we beef it up a bit? No. We won't get anyone very interesting. I don't want anyone very interesting. I want someone to clean. We're going to get another old boy. Just up. put that in. <laughs> I'll phone it through. Oh, no, get out. Got a pen, Jim? Right. Busy professional man, divorced, <laughs> and living in comparative comfort, <laughs> requires... No. Seeks. <laughs> no. Desires. <laughs> Unattached, attractive, vivacious lady for light household duties. And companionship. <laughs> Sense of humour essential. Also ability to host select dinner parties. Ring 246 Come in, Susie. Sit down. Susie, sit down. Won't be a moment. Just finishing an article for Mercury. Oh, are you a reporter? Well, a freelance journalist. Matthew Willows, the man they can't gag. How exciting. Well, some people think so. It's just a job, really. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Another fearless expose of corruption in high places. <laughs> Now, if I could just ask you a few questions, Susie. Aren't we going to wait for your father? Oh, good heavens, no. Leaves all this sort of thing to me. You see, I'm here most of the time, when I'm not on assignment. It would mean you'd have to work around me, I'm afraid. Oh, I don't mind. Yes. <laughs> now, um, have you any references? No. Any previous experience? No. Do you like housework? No. <laughs> Yes, well, that all seems very satisfactory. Um, what was your last job? I worked in a circus. Pardon? I worked in a circus. I've always been in show business. What did you do? Well, I assisted a lion tamer mostly, holding his hoops. I wore this brief leotard covered in spangles with black fishnet tights. And when I wasn't holding his hoops, I'd stand sort of like this. <laughs> and like that. <laughs> Did you really? Um, why did you leave? 
Well, it was the lion tamer, Roberto. He became extremely possessive. He wanted a permanent relationship. Well, I told him, you can't have a permanent relationship with a man who sticks his head in a lion's mouth every night. Of course not. So I left. Now I'm resting. Well, you've come to the right place. You can rest here. What about the work? There's nothing to it, Susie. Just a little light dusting, that's all. Well, I wouldn't want to damage my nails. No, you won't damage your nails. And windows are out. Are they? Well, I couldn't risk the steps. I'm a dancer. My legs are insured. Well, yes, well, I appreciate that, Susie. You won't want to risk those legs. I'll do the windows. What about your assignments? That's all right. That gives me an idea. I could mention your act in my column. I haven't got an act. Well, I haven't got a column. Not yet. It's only a question of time. I can juggle plates. We've got plates, lots of them. No, what you need is a press agent. Marilyn Monroe was nothing until she got a press agent. Marilyn Monroe? Yes, I can see it now. Susie... What's your other name? Perkins. <laughs> no, that won't do. Let me think. Um, I know. Susie De La Rue. Exotic dancer and juggler. The dish with the dishes. <laughs> yeah, well, after that, commercials, film parts. You see, all you need... Is the right handling. <laughs> Have you still got the spangles? Yeah. Good. When do I start? Tomorrow. Mornings or afternoons? Afternoons. I don't get up very early. Neither do I. <laughs> Tomorrow, then. What about your father? Busy, professional man, seeking companionship? Yeah, well, that's the trouble. He's too busy. <laughs> By the time he gets around to companionship, he's worn out. <laughs> Yeah, well, see you tomorrow, then. Oh, and uh, don't forget the spangles, will you? <laughs> well, Mrs. Fennell. Please, Fiona. Fiona. Everything seems most satisfactory. Does it? Yes, yes, your references are excellent. The vicar speaks very highly of you. And do I meet all your requirements? <laughs> oh, uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. I did wonder if you were looking for someone younger. No, no, no. I prefer the older woman in these circumstances. How wise. And I do have a sense of humour. Do you? Although I am Mrs. Fennell, I would point out that the late Mr. Fennell is no longer with us. Oh. Therefore, I am unattached and there'll be no complications in that direction. In what direction? I am flexible regarding our working arrangements. I can accommodate you in most things. Good. Uh, of course, there are limits. Oh, of course, yes. I'll try not to make too many demands on you, Fiona. Demand away, Mr. Willows. <laughs> I can always say no. <laughs> Will there be many social engagements? Pardon? Oh, Matthew, this is Mrs. Fennell. She's coming to clean for us. What? <laughs> something another? No. When would you like to start, then, Fiona? Tomorrow? Uh, good. Mornings or afternoons? Mornings. Why? Well, I'm here in the afternoons. Mornings will be fine, Mr. Willows. I'll be here, ready and willing. <laughs> Funny woman. Then why did you pick her? She's the best of a bad lot, Matthew. No, I've had some very strange applicants. Where's that paper? What paper? The Mercury. I thought she left it behind. No. I haven't seen ours this week either. Where is it? I think you're making a mistake there, Dad. Why? She's married. You could have trouble with her husband. I won't have trouble with her husband. He's dead. She's a widow. <laughs> Not another one. What is this thing you've got about widows? I haven't got a thing about widows. I just feel sorry for them, that's all. They should feel sorry for their husbands. <laughs> I mean, what did he die of, eh? Perhaps she nagged him to death. She looked like a nagger to me. Do you know she's a nag? You've only just met her. Widows are all the same. No sooner put one under the ground than they're looking for another. <laughs> you should have seen all the candidates before you announced your decision. Oh, I don't see why. It's not Miss World. It certainly isn't. I don't know if she had the nerve to apply. We could have her under the Trade Descriptions Act. <laughs> not the least bit attractive. Well, why should she be attractive? What? <laughs> Well, I, I didn't say she had to be attractive. I, I'm just pointing out that she's not attractive. She's certainly not vivacious. Why should she be vivacious? Well, no reason. I, I just thought that if she's not attractive, then 
then the least she could be is vivacious. <laughs> You don't mind? No, you finish your nails. <laughs> Tell me about the cabinet minister. Well, it was when Roberta and I were doing the clubs. We had this knife throwing act. Well, it was more of a ballet, really. I was tied to this stake wearing leotard and spangles, and Roberta would enter wearing silver boots, blue cape and pouch. He'd run his hands over my body, consumed in a jealous passion, then start throwing knives. Oh, it was very artistic. Anyway, this night, one ricocheted and nicked this fella's ear. Well, of course, I apologised, and he said if I spent the evening with him, he'd forget about it. Well, since we weren't in sure, well, I was, but not the audience. I said yes. Well, before the evening was over, I knew all the budget secrets and the address of a safe bunker in the event of nuclear war. What a story! Well, has that done? Now... I've got a surprise for you. The Spangles? Yes. I'll make sure the coat's clear. <laughs> Dad! Yeah. yeah? You're back early. What's the matter? Nothing. I've had the feeling for some time that you're hiding something from me. Now, what is it? Well, it's about the cleaning lady. Yes. Well... I didn't realise you were going to come to a decision so quickly. And, um... What? I hired one as well. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Well, I was getting round to it. I wanted to make sure she was satisfactory. And is she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she cleans everywhere. Tops of doors, back of the telly, under the fridge. Found that sausage roll we lost at Christmas. <laughs> well, what's Mrs Fennell going to say when she finds out? She won't. She comes in the mornings. Matthew, if you think I'm going to... Well... <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who was that? That was the cleaning lady. <laughs> see if I've got the facts straight. We now have one cleaning lady for the morning and one for the afternoon. And that's eight hours solid cleaning a day. Apart from the expense, do you really think it's necessary? No. Well, then get rid of her. Why don't you get rid of yours? Why should I get rid of mine? Susie's very good, Dad. And she polishes the table, it really shines. Of course it does, because my cleaning lady's polished it first. <laughs> and another thing, my cleaning lady wears an apron. Yeah. Well, I didn't like to mention this before. I didn't want you to think I was nitpicking. But why is yours wearing spangles? Well, she used to work in a circus. Pardon? She used to work in a circus. Circus. Well, she's come to the right place, isn't she? <laughs> we can't just get rid of her, Dad. She needs the work. Well, why did she leave the circus? The lion tamer was after her. The lion tamer? He was incredibly jealous. Oh, yes. She couldn't take any more. The lions were beginning to notice. Getting restless and stalking about the cage. Animals can sense that sort of thing. So she packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Yeah. And you believe all that? Look, Dad, I'm a hard-nosed newsman. I know when people are telling the truth. She's fascinating. She's, she's led a full and interesting life. She'll be very useful to me as a writer. And she can juggle plates. Plates? <laughs> Apart from that, she, she'll brighten the place up. She certainly will if she goes round in spangles. <laughs> you, you're so gullible, Matthew. Circuses, lion tamers, juggling plates. She's obviously a compulsive liar. Well, if you won't get rid of her, I will. Susie? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Susie, that's, uh, that's a very nice costume, but... Uh, 
But don't you think you ought to change now? I mean, you must be getting cold. Matthew said you'd want to see me. Yes, yes. It's about the cleaning, you see. There's been a bit of a mix-up. Uh, I already have a cleaning lady. Oh. And you want me to go? Oh, no, it's nothing personal. Well, is she nicer than me? No, no, she needs the money. Well, I need the money. Yeah, but she's a widow. Well, I'm a widow. <laughs> You're very young to be a widow. I know, it was a circus romance. Circus? I married the human cannonball. <laughs> what? Trevor, the human cannonball. We knew our happiness was built on shifting sand. But you live with danger when you're married to the human cannonball. You must do, yes. I begged him to be careful. For my sake, for the first time, he began to take precautions. He started to reduce the charge in the cannon. Some nights he barely dropped out the end of the barrel. The boss wasn't pleased. He wanted something more spectacular. And then we reached the Avon. The Avon? The boss wanted Trevor to clear the Avon in a spectacular publicity stunt. It'd never been done before. Well, Trevor responded to the challenge. He wouldn't listen to me. He'd, he'd double, treble the charge in the cannon. He was determined to clear that river. <laughs> and did he? He not only cleared the river, he cleared a railway line and a bus depot and all. I'm sorry. It was such a waste, Mr. Willows. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a busy professional man seeking companionship? <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. The position's filled. I'm not seeking opposition. Uh, I'm a Roberto. The lion tamer? Ah, you heard of yeah? Yeah, Roberto the Great. But you don't want me. You want Henry. Henry? Henry the Insignificant. <laughs> I'm Matthew. Matthew Willows of the Mercury. Ah, you're a reporter, eh? Well, a journalist. I stick around. You make it a story. Yeah, I can <laughs> see it now. Roberto cracks the whip. See? I've come for my woman. Oh, this gets better and better. You know, I cannot live without her. I have become passion slave. Passion slave? What a phrase. Can I use that? I cannot work. I cannot concentrate. Even the animals, they know something is wrong. Well, of course they do. They can sense these things. Uh, last night, they saw Roberto cry. Wonderful. Last night, the lions saw Roberto cry. <laughs> they could tame the beasts of the jungle, but not Susie de la Rue. <laughs> Who? Well, we thought we'd change her name. It's a better image. <laughs> so, I find out where she lives. Her landlady says she'd take a job here, huh? <laughs> and what a job. Now, where are they? Wait a minute. Let me get this down. Roberto, now, is that Robert with an O? <laughs> Can I give you some advice, Susie? Yes, Mr. Willows. See, most of us lead very ordinary lives that wouldn't warrant a column, not even a paragraph in a local paper. So, we invent a world that is different. More glamorous, more exciting. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Until we confuse it with reality. What? You think I'm not telling the truth? Oh, come on, Susie. Circuses, lion tamers, juggling plates. You see, Matthew, he's very gullible. You shouldn't take advantage of him. So, listen, will you do something for me? Will you stop telling all these stories? If that's what you want, Mr. Willows. <laughs> Who are you? This is Roberto, the lion tamer. <laughs> I don't believe this. It's true. What does he want? I think he's come to horsewhip you. What? I come for my woman. I'm not your woman, cheeky devil. Hey, you want to watch that whip? You can put someone's eye out. I know what I'm doing, my friend. With this whip, I can take his skin off a peach. <laughs> that was the Grand Garby. Help! Help! Don't, don't, don't do that. Do you want the neighbours to hear? So, I find you at last in your loveness. Huh? This isn't a loveness. She's our cleaning lady. <laughs> Just like that. Well, she, she was showing us the act. She was, uh, she was going to get the plates when you came. Oh, and now you will see my act. Once more, the whip flicked its venomous tongue across the room. Help! Help! Will you stop doing that? Why don't you ask your lover to protect you, huh? Oh, I'm not a lover. I only met her today. Tell him, Matthew. Roberto fixed him with the same icy stare that had quelled the king of the beasts. <laughs> look, look, can't we be reasonable about this? He's not reasonable. He's potty. You say that to Roberto? Hey, put that whip down. This room's not big enough. <laughs> well, why don't you take it, my friend? 
right. <laughs> Not the Grinch, Dad! <laughs> oh, my God, she's killed him! <laughs> Are the neighbours still there? Yeah. 24 hours and they're still trying to see in. Well, they don't get this sort of thing on the road very often. No. How's Roberto? A mild concussion. She's still at his bedside. What a story! Hey, wait a minute. You can't print that. Why not? You faced up to a man with a whip. You're a hero, Death. <laughs> oh, well, if you put it like that, yes. <laughs> yes. I suppose you're right there. Yes. No point you're being secretive about it. What are you going to write? When local man, Henry Willows, 49... 49? <laughs> yeah. Make that 45. <laughs> when local man, Henry Willows, 45, etc., was sitting quietly with his cleaning lady in his £60,000 house... How much? 60000 Make that 70. <laughs> In his £70,000 house, he was surprised to find himself confronted by Roberto, an angry lion tamer brandishing a whip. Henry tried to reason with Roberto, but the fiery Latin, incensed at finding his erstwhile lady love clad only in leotard and tights, refused what? to be pacified. <laughs> Henry, showing the same spirit that had won him the Tate Memorial Trophy... Oh, no, Matthew, you, you, you can't print that. I'd never live it down. But I need the money. Why? You said I had to pay Susie's wages. I see. So this is blackmail. Yeah. Get out! <laughs> <coughs> Hello, Fiona. Well, apparently there was little excitement here yesterday. Look, look, I don't know what you heard. Nothing much, only that you fought over a circus performer with whips. <laughs> you did nothing of the kind. It was all a misunderstanding. I've heard of looking for companionship, but that's ridiculous. Um? <laughs> Looks as though I'm going to need that sense of humour, Mr Willows. Fiona, I hope you haven't got the wrong idea about me. Of course not. Silly boy. <laughs> Matthew! <laughs>